Let's pick things up there for tonight's Political Insider. Joining me, Dave Leventhal, senior political reporter at the Center for Public Integrity. As we just heard, Donald Trump swept the Republican contest last night, five for five. Now he needs fewer than 300 delegates to secure the GOP nomination. I'd like to play an excerpt from his victory speech. I've had 55,000 negative ads against me. When I ran in Florida, I had 14,000 negative ads, millions and millions of dollars, and I won in a landslide. I've had negative ads all throughout, and I've won races in a landslide, okay? In a landslide. You know it. You report it. You all report it. I'm not — even Carl would agree to that, right? I mean, landslides. And yet I have this tremendous amount of — you almost say, do ads mean anything? I think we're going to hurt the uh, industry pretty much, because people are going to say, what does an ad mean? But I've had — now, largely the ads were false. A little truth to some of them, perhaps, but largely false. But I had 55,000, 100 million, and even more negative ads. Even in New Hampshire, I mean, Jeb spent millions and millions of dollars of, on negative ads, and I won New Hampshire in a landslide. No, no. But now what's happening is most of these people that have been fighting me are gone. All right, Dave, your team just completed a comprehensive study of the negative ad campaign against Donald Trump. Do his claims hold up? If you can believe it more, as Donald Trump is actually understating his case, we found about 60,000 ads wow. that demonstrably attack Donald Trump, uh, sometimes some other opponents too, but are very focused on Donald Trump. And it just speaks to, on one hand, the desperation that some of the Republican, uh, Republican organizations, candidates, super PACs, in some cases nonprofits, they're just going after him in, in any possible form and fashion that they can. It's this no Trump, anyone but Trump kind of campaign. And as yesterday uh, clearly stated, uh, Donald Trump is uh, just barreling toward the nomination, really seemingly unaffected by this massive, massive ad campaign that does not only number in the tens of thousands of ads, but the tens of millions of dollars. We could call him the Teflon Don. <laughs> now, looking at your data, the vast majority of these ads came in the first three months of 2016. Explain that. And to put a sharper point on it, Morris, too, most of them coming in February and March leading into April. So this has been, in a, in a way, very uh, late uh, because Donald Trump, of course, has been running for president for months and months and months since the middle of 2015. And yet it wasn't until just a couple of months ago that this massive ad blitz came and hit Donald Trump in earnest. So a lot of Republicans right now who do not want to see Donald Trump become the nominee, who want anyone but Donald Trump to become the Republican nominee for president of the United States, scratching their heads a little bit, wondering, man, if we just would have gotten in the race uh, perhaps a little bit earlier and tried to define Donald Trump, tried to be back against Donald Trump, say, in September or October of 2015 instead of February or March of 2016, maybe things would have been a little bit different. Maybe yeah. Donald Trump would have more competition. They, they didn't take the threat seriously. Generally speaking, who's airing these ads? You have a number of different uh, organizations on the Republican side. First of all, you have the candidates themselves. Ted Cruz has been far out there. But also you have a number of super PACs, these organizations that can raise and spend unlimited amounts of money and bring that money to bear in advertising or other types of communications. They have been incredibly active. They are ones that support, in some cases, Ted Cruz, other cases, John Kasich, who's still in the race on the Republican side, and in a couple of cases, uh, organizations that are independent. They just want anyone but Donald Trump and uh, in part exist to beat back Donald Trump. One is run by a former uh, top official for Mitt Romney and his presidential campaign in 2012. And then finally, Hillary Hillary Clinton to her campaign and sort of a general election pivot has run about 8,000 television ads already that have been attacking Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton still has Bernie Sanders on her hand, but she is very, very much looking toward this fall and looking at Donald Trump and in, uh, in the bullseye right now. Now, let me follow up on that because in some ways this campaign against Trump is unprecedented. Most of these ads are, though, are not coming from the Hillary Clinton side, at least not yet. Here's an, ex an example. Hippo. Crit. One bellows, one bellows malarkey. Donald Trump repeatedly says one thing, does another. The hypocrite says he's champion of American workers, but had his line of Trump ties made in China. Some of the laborers on his palatial DC hotel, illegal immigrants, neither for president. America needs proven honorable leadership. John Kasich. New Day for America is responsible for the content of this advertising. I've actually got some Trump ties. <laughs> Dave, does this represent what's out there? 
Uh, it sure does, and uh, these are these are not ads that are wearing uh, that are being uh, put up by people with kid gloves here. These are ads that are trying to strike right at the heart of Donald Trump's campaign, trying to paint him as anything uh, that that is uh, other than uh, uh, good or good for America. They really, really want to tear down Donald Trump in any way possible. But again, it just speaks to the point that Donald Trump has been able to just barrel straight right through, and these ads have had a minimal effect, if any effect at all. And really, we're getting down uh, to the the final weeks here and uh, if any of this is going to be effective it's got to be effective now because Donald Trump is closer than ever 300 delegates or so away from being able to capture the nomination reach that magic 1,237 delegate mark that he needs to clinch the nomination prior to going into the Republican National Convention in July that's what he needs it's not as though independent voters don't watch TV, Dave. What do you make of this strategy? Is the GOP shooting itself in the foot? <laughs> it could be. There's been so much animosity, a civil war, if you want to call it that, on the, Repub or on the Republican side. So as a result, you've got to wonder if this is going to have a lasting effect and whether it's Donald Trump or Ted Cruz or John Kasich or anyone else, that people are just simply going to be so fed up with the Republicans that uh, the Republican nominee is going to be tainted. And the Democrats are certainly hoping for that and that's why you see Hillary Clinton already at this point sort of learning the lesson that Republicans internally are learning now that hey we want to get out front we want to try to tag Donald Trump with every bad thing that we can tag him on we want to go after those independents who either haven't made up their mind or are not voting in the primaries and are going to be holding their electoral power until the general election let's get to them right now so that's one strategy that certainly is out there and if the rumor is just half true that Bill Clinton suggested to Donald Trump long ago that he run for president. What a, what a shrewd move on his part. <laughs> Dave Leventhal, sure. senior political reporter with the Center for Public Integrity. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome, Morris. Thank you.